Okay, so today we're going to look at counting trees. And so it's a new way kind of, of finding probability. Um, we're going to look at counting trees and what's called the fundamental counting principle, although um, I'm not really concerned that you know the name. I just realized that if you're looking at things, you'll see sometimes that name that named that way. So it's and it is kind of a common name. Um, so first of all, counting trees are basically are a um, like a tree diagram that show all the outcomes. of a certain series of decisions. Okay, that's one way to think about them. So let me give you an example of this. So one way you might want to use a counting tree. So the first example, and didn't feel like writing it down today, and also thought it would take a little less time for you to kind of look at it if it was already what I had typed out. So lunch menu at a certain restaurant consists of the following items. So sandwiches, we have a number of options. We have ham, turkey, bologna, grilled cheese, and veggie. And then we have sides of mac and cheese, salad, and fries, and drinks of cola, root beer, and lemon lime. So if we wanted to figure out how many different choices of one sandwich one side and one drink, um, one way to do it would be to make a counting tree. Now, sometimes you see counting trees with a start on the edge. Um, it is completely up to you whether you do that. I don't tend to do that. I tend to start with just the, um, the original option. So I might say ham and then with ham, I could even either choose mac and cheese or salad or fries okay and then with those I could then choose and I'm going to change the color just to kind of show you if with ham and mac and cheese I could also choose cola root beer or lemon lime and then I would do the same thing for all of those okay cola root beer and lemon lime now, for a whole counting tree, I'm going to do that for every single sandwich type. Or, excuse me, yeah, sandwich type. So then I would go and do turkey. And I would say I have mac and cheese, uh, salad, and fries. And then I again have the option of cola, root beer, lemon lime, and cola, <laughs> root beer, lemon lime, and cola root beer, lemon lime, okay, and then I would just continue, um, bologna, and then mac and cheese, salad, fries, and I'm just going to kind of stick with one color here, so grilled cheese with mac and cheese, salad, and fries, and also veggie with mac and cheese, salad, and fries, and then again, cola, root beer, lemon lime, cola, root beer, lemon lime, cola, root beer, lemon lime, and I would keep doing that, and I'm going to finish it, and again, <laughs> kind of made it so it was a little harder to see, lemon lime, and cola, root beer, lemon lime, and here, cola, root beer, um, lemon lime. Now, you'll see that I have a whole lot of options here, um, but if I choose, if I kind of go on my edge here, I can count how many total options there are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 5, 2, 6, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 
37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. So there were a total of 45 options and choices. Now, that seems like a really long time um, and a whole lot of work in order to just figure out that there were 45 choices. And so there is, if all we're at being asked to do is figure out how many total choices there are, um, then there is kind of a quicker way to do this. Um, so this is what's called the fundamental counting principle. And some of you might already have kind of figured out what you can do, but basically it says the total number of choices or options um, is equal to um, each part multiplied by other parts. So in other words, each individual decision, we'll call it. So in other words, if I have, I had five sandwiches, I had three sides, and I had three drinks. So how could I choose one of each? How many options would I have to choose if I had to choose one of this? So one individual decision, and then a second, and then a third individual decision, and my total would just be those three multiplied together. So five times three times three, which is 45. So obviously, it's a little bit easier to figure out a total if you just multiply <laughs> all of the um, numbers in each option that you have. But uh, what you'll see is that a, um, a tree diagram, so I'm gonna do another example of a tree diagram. A tree diagram can be super useful um, when you actually need to figure out like answers or um, individual uh, probabilities for different choices. So it's not super useful when you're looking at just the total number, but um, if I wanna look at something like this, okay, now again, I'm kind of using a one that was already typed out for me. So we're going to an ice cream uh, shop and we have a number of different decisions, but in this particular ice cream shop, you don't have a whole lot of options for ice cream. So you have three options for ice creams. So you have chocolate, you have vanilla, and you have strawberry. And then um, you can have one, to two toppings. Those are the only options. So you either get fudge or you get marshmallow. And you can have two types of sprinkles. You can either have chocolate or you can have rainbow. Um, so we're gonna show this in a tree diagram, but sometimes, and in this particular situation, um, you might want to make a key as to like what things are going to um, be called rather than having to write the whole thing out. So I'm going to call chocolate ice cream C. I'm going to call vanilla ice cream V. I'm going to call strawberry ice cream S. Okay, and then I'm going to call fudge, just F, and marshmallow M. Now chocolate sprinkles, I can't just call C because I already did. So I'm going to call that C S, and I'm going to call rainbow sprinkles R S. So I'll make a tree diagram here. And now a sample space we'll talk about in just a second. Okay, so you've actually had sample spaces before, um, and I think we actually discussed them before. But um, So first of all, I can choose chocolate, vanilla, or strawberry. So again, my first choice will be either chocolate or vanilla or strawberry. Um, and then I can choose either fudge or marshmallow off of the chocolate. Um, and same with the vanilla. And same with the strawberry. Okay, and then I can either choose chocolate sprinkles or I can choose rainbow sprinkles off of each of these. Now you'll notice this one's a little simpler and a little shorter to make the tree diagram. Okay, so my sample space is all of my possible outcomes listed. So in this case, I would write kind of in order, and I can use this to kind of guide me, this tree diagram to guide me. So my sample space would be chocolate, fudge, chocolate sprinkles, chocolate, fudge, rainbow sprinkles, and then chocolate, um, marshmallow, chocolate sprinkles, chocolate, marshmallow, rainbow sprinkles. So this sort of thing, and you just write it all out. Okay, kind of that list, whoops, vanilla, fudge, rainbow sprinkles. 
Um, it doesn't really matter what order, but I kind of like to keep it in order. And then the last one, strawberry fudge chocolate sprinkles, strawberry fudge rainbow sprinkles, and then strawberry marshmallow chocolate sprinkles, strawberry marshmallow rainbow sprinkles. So it kind of gives all of the different options um, in that all of the different outcomes. So the list of all the outcomes is your sample space. Um, and we already discussed that before, but we didn't really list them before. So what's useful, though, with a tree diagram is then you can figure out the probabilities. And as we discussed in past uh, videos, probability of something occurring is written as P, something like that. So they used P, chocolate, I, C. We just used C. So first of all, let's figure out our total number of outcomes here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 12, or, of course, we could have done the fundamental counting principle. There are three flavors, two toppings, and two sprinkles. So 3 times 2 times 2 also gives me 12. Okay, so remember, that's always your total and your denominator in a probability problem. So as a fraction, um, chocolate probability of chocolate ice cream is out of the total possibilities which ones are chocolate. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to count, I had one, so this direction here, and I had this second option, which is here, but then here, that's still chocolate. Okay, and then I had this third option, chocolate with marshmallow and chocolate sprinkles, but that's still chocolate. Okay, and then I had this fourth option, which is this one. Okay, and rainbow sprinkles. So you'll notice that's four out of 12. Now, some of you might be noticing this is also just the chance of chocolate, which is one out of these three options here, which is also true. Okay, so you could have found that either way. You could either have said one out of three ice creams, or you could have found the total number of chocolates that were in this overall sample space. Now, the probability of having fudge would be, we'll do it kind of the quicker way now, out of these two, it's going to be every half. So it's half up here half up here and half up here. So you could think of it as either 6 out of 12. So these two, these two, and these two, or just one half. So the chance of having fudge is 1 out of 2, or 6 out of 12. Okay? Now, this one's a little bit trickier, because this one is, and I'm going to highlight this one, chocolate ice cream and fudge. Okay, this is what's called the compound event, and um, we'll talk about that as vocabulary later, but the compound event means both things happen, chocolate ice cream and fudge both. So we have chocolate ice cream, and we have fudge. And that was in these two, and it didn't matter which one of those was true. But those are the only ones that happened. So two out of the 12 were chocolate ice cream and fudge. Okay, so one in six. Okay. All right, probability of vanilla, again, same as the chocolate was one in three. Probability of rainbow. All right, so now this one, I like to use the diagram, okay, um, but you could think of it as just one and two like we did earlier, but this one's rainbow sprinkles. All of these are rainbow sprinkles. So notice I circled six of them. That's six out of 12 as well. So it's one chance in two of having rainbow. But vanilla and rainbow, again, a little bit trickier, um, and I'll do these in pink. So vanilla... And that was this path here. Vanilla fudge and rainbow or vanilla marshmallow and rainbow. So there were two out of 12 options. Okay, so one in six again. Okay, this one, chocolate ice cream, fudge, and rainbow. Well, there's only one way I could go there. And unfortunately, I kept asking one at the top here. So chocolate ice cream right here and fudge and rainbow sprinkles. There's only this option here that has that, so that's 1 out of 12. Okay, vanilla or strawberry. Okay, so you'll notice these are all vanilla options. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4 there. And then here's another strawberry. These are all strawberry options, so there's 4. So either you could think of that as 8 out of 12, or the chance, looking back up here, 2 out of the 3 of those events. Okay, either way, again, will work. So 8 out of the 12 or two-thirds. Okay. All right, I'm going to do one last example, so one where you already have the tree diagram, um, and then you kind of, we're not going to do all of the problems here. Um, we're not going to list all of the 
possibilities, but this here would be the sample space. So here is a, and sometimes you see them drawn this way, and that's why I wanted to use this example. So Eddie and Logan are analyzing a game involving two different spinners um, and helping them find these theoretical probabilities, which they all are. They make this counting tree, okay? And they write start, so the first spinner is here and the second spinner is here. Sometimes you'll see um, counting trees that show a start. Sometimes you just begin with the um, first option. So either way, um, some of the, I'm not going to list all of them, but I can just kind of list all the blues. So you could have blue one, you could have blue two, you could have blue three, and another blue three. Actually, I'm going to list all of them. Just kidding. What R1, R2, R3, R3, and so on. Okay? Actually, I'm not. But I could list another R1, R2, R3, R3, etc. Okay? Actually, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and list them because it's going to help me when I want to do all of these other things. So G1, G2, G3, G3, and yellow one, yellow two, yellow three, yellow three. Okay, now I've listed all my options, so I'm taking a counting tree and I went to a list, which does tend to um, make it a little more clear at times. So I want to see the probability now of getting blue or green um, and then also getting a three. So I'm going to draw that out. So blue or green. So either one's an option. So here's my blue. And then this one has a blue and a three. So does that one have a blue or a three? Okay. And then it says green is also an option though. So the other option would be here, green. Green and a three here. And green and a three there. Now my total number of options, there were four, eight, 12, 16, 20 total. So out of the total of 20, um, I have one, two, three, four options for green, or and blue or green, and a three. So so four out of the 20, which is one in five. Okay, and I and that's about 20% if you want to. Well, not about. That's exactly 20% if you want to use that. Um, this is one of the problems that in the past on the quiz. Um, has gone wrong a whole lot because um, I think the blue or green kind of confuses people. Okay, what's the probability of not getting a two on the second spinner? So kind of is up to you. I'm going to use the list for this one. Um, so not getting a two would include all of these, all of these, and all of these. So out of the 20, you'll notice I circled a total of 15 of them. Okay, or you could have thought of it this way. You can take the total number, which is 20 out of 20, and circle the ones that I don't want, which are these twos. So subtracting 5 out of 20, which would again give you that 15 out of 20, or 3 out of 4. Or sorry, <laughs> sorry, 15 out of 20. Oh, yeah, that's right, 3 out of 4. 3 fourths chance. So that is it for notes. Uh, go ahead and complete the practice, which is not too long. And hopefully, um, if you have any questions, you can either email me or come to uh, the Zoom meeting or give me a call. Have a good day.